Welcome everybody to a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video today. And this week sees the release of the creepy horror flick, The Wretched. Hitting store shelves along with the romantic music drama, The High Note. The complete seventh season of The Blacklist. And MVD is releasing a collector's edition Blu-ray of the 1992 Rutger Hauer starring sci-fi horror flick, Split Second plus much, much more. So let's go see the deals, exclusives, and we're at our first location, Walmart. So let's go in and see what they got. All right, everybody, we are under the new releases and they actually have some stuff to show off this week. Thank God compared to last week, which was really like a dead end street. This time they do have some stuff. And the first thing I'm seeing over here is they do have Season 3 of The Good Doctor for, yeah, they got no price over in this one. The first no price of the week, guys. And this actually came out last week. Now, I didn't see it at any of the stores that I actually went to. So I thought maybe nobody was carrying it. Well, eventually somebody was going to carry it because, you know, it's, a it's ABC. It's The Good Doctor, medical shows. You know, people love that shit, man. His mind is a mystery. His methods are a miracle. Very interesting. Okay, so I've never seen a single episode of The Good Doctor. I, I have not, man. But I remember, actually, when the show was going to premiere on ABC. And what was interesting is that the promotion was everywhere. I, was, I would go to, like, the movie theater... And they would be having promos for The Good Doctor. Any sort of TV show I clicked on to, you would see some form of promotion for The Good Doctor. I mean, it was literally everywhere. You really couldn't avoid it, man. The premise is interesting. This guy with autism trying to fight his way into the medical field and proving himself. I mean, it's a good story. I like it. It's interesting. But me and sort of the standard medical shows I'm not really into these type of things this is sort of the closest one that I was kind of thinking of getting into but I decided no I think I'll kind of pass so yeah that's what I did I mean again it's on season three probably gonna get a season four yeah new season coming soon so I'm imagining it's a very popular show. People really like it, the medical drama aspect of it, the characters, the plots, the situations. People really enjoy that stuff. But it's been a long time since I've ever gotten into that kind of stuff, man. It's been a really, really long while. So I don't really know, man. Hmm. Is it interesting? Maybe. I like the cover, though. cover's really good. I mean, if it is worth it, definitely let me know. I like Freddie Highmore. Hmm. Is this a medical drama that I should get into? Definitely let me know, guys. Then the next thing I'm seeing over here is they have the Blu-ray DVD digital of the High Note for... Ah, yes. We are without a price yet again, guys. And the same for the DVD of the High Note as well. Uh, maybe they got to invest in the price stickers. Just saying, guys. Now, I got a chance to watch this on Amazon Prime. And... To be fair, I wasn't really I wasn't really looking forward to the high note, to be honest with you. The reason why was because the 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 cover here is kind of kind of lackluster and really simple and it doesn't really impress me and I'm like, "Oh my god, this is probably a really cheesy and chintzy flick." And I'm like, "I I don't know if I want to dive into this." But I said, you know what, I'm going to do it for you guys. I'm going to watch it for the video. Why the hell not? Hey, I mean, it's got Dakota Johnson in here. Maybe she'll get naked. I highly doubt it, but it was a gamble I was willing to take. So I did. I said, what the hell, man? And after watching it, I have to admit how much I absolutely really enjoyed this movie, guys. Crazy enough how much I really did. Yes, Dakota Johnson does not get naked, unfortunately. But outside of that disappointment, it's a it's a nice little flick, man. It's basically about this this woman, Maggie, who is this 
personal assistant to this very famous superstar uh, artist, musician, and it's sort of her sort of struggling with that life, yet wanting to sort of break out into being more of a music producer and sort of finding this budding romance with, with this younger black man. I thought it was honestly really well done, man. It was it was honestly really good. It was cool to sort of see the 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 LA music scene. The LA music scene was really cool here. I like the characters. I thought the music was really well done here. I thought everybody did a great job with the musical aspects. Like the the singing here is phenomenal. I thought all that was really well done. The acting across the board is really great. Uh, Tracy Ellis Ross does a great job as sort of the main lead artist musician there her name is grace does a really fantastic job ice cube even in a small role does great here and so does dakota johnson she's really likable here she does a really great job with with the romance aspect you believe it you believe that she cares for for this guy she does a really great job overall man i really enjoyed this this flick i like the romance aspect the romance is not the the romance is not too schmaltzy it's done really in a clever way during the whole music scene aspect to it. Them getting together and falling in love with with sort of both of their admiration for music and one another. You kind of feel it, man, and it's actually really well done. It's a good drama. It's a good love story. It's really great with the music aspect to it. Look, I'm not going to lie. It's not for everybody, okay? This is not a movie that's for a lot of you guys out there. But if you like a good romantic drama based in sort of the music scene, the high note is actually pretty decent. I went into this film really not expecting anything, and I was really surprised by how much I really enjoyed this one, guys. This is honestly a winner. And at first I would have never said that, but after watching it, I was really impressed. And then over here I'm seeing they have the DVD of the complete seventh season of The Blacklist for yet again no sticker here, guys. I think this is the week where they, they've ran out of stickers, honestly. And just like with The Good Doctor, I have never seen a single episode of The Blacklist. I don't know whether that's going to shock you guys or not, but again, I haven't had cable in a really long while, man. And even though I haven't seen anything of this, man, I've heard a lot of people really praising this show for years, really loving it, really loving the plot and the characters and the intrigue and have really said nothing but nice things about this show. And I've always been curious about checking it out. And I'm not going to lie, the, the main reason why is James Spader. I love me Spader, man. I think the guy is genius as an actor. He can get into so many different types of roles. He's really clever. And I'm assuming from what I've seen in previews and other things about the show that he kind of plays almost like a Hannibal Lecter type of, of criminal who is in jail and he's helping out this this agent with cases and eventually he escapes and sort of the intrigue of trying to catch him and and dealing with his past and everything. I've heard, again, this is a really great show. I've heard nothing but really good things about it. The complete seventh season, and of course they are getting a new season coming very, very, very soon. Is it worth getting into or is this show one of those shows that after a while sort of loses its luster? Because... I was kind of thinking about this because after a while, a lot of that intrigue with the Hannibal Lecter stuff, I mean, it was really cool, the first few movies, but could they do sort of a TV show on it? And I mean, they did, obviously, with Hannibal, but I mean, could they do something that's sort of similar to it and keep the intrigue going for a long time with something like The Blacklist? Or after a while, did they kind of like fizzle out? I mean, definitely let me know what you think of The, the Blacklist. That does look interesting just for Spader alone, though. They do have that, and I thought it was really funny because during the live stream, you guys were kind of joking with me about f four kids in it. And no, I have not watched this movie yet. I have not watched it. There is no way I am going to watch this thing, man. Look at that creepy fucker, man. God, I don't want to even deal with it. Dude, I, 
I survived the likes of Mac and me. I am not going to... I'm not going to traumatize myself. No. N no goddamn way. Stay far away from me, damn it. I'm not going to watch that, man. And I also noticed that they do have the complete first season of The Dark Materials, which they did not have last week. They finally got that in as well. Of course, they don't have a sticker for this either. Eh, of course. Of course not. But uh, not bad here. A few things to, to check out. And that four kids in it keeps on haunting me. Ah. Oh boy. Let's see if they might have anything else to check out. And then over here, guys, I'm seeing a little new section that they might have just put up not too long ago. And they have all of these different movies and series. And they come with a Universal Pictures cinch bag. It's kind of what it looks like here. So it's an exclusive only. I believe it's an exclusive slipcover and an exclusive Universal Pictures cinch bag that comes with the DVD. On top of that, you also get a bonus one digital movie only on Vudu. Very interesting. Hmm. Kind of doing some interesting exclusives to kind of get people to buy more of these in interesting copies. Hmm. I guess a anything to drum up PR and support. Why the hell not, man? Got that for $7.88. They've got one for Trolls. They've got one for the Shrek 4 movie collection for $19.88, which actually is not a bad price at all. For four films on DVD, if you don't own any of the Shrek ones, and with the bag, that's actually a really great price. They have the E.T. one here for $7.88. They have the Back to the Future trilogy for $22.88, which actually is not a bad price for that either. Mind you, the 4K is coming down the pike very soon, so maybe not. But if you're not interested in that, they do have that. They also have the Fast and Furious movie collection with the bag, but that's only Fast and Furious 5 through 8. But they do have down here, they have Fast and Furious 1 through 4 collection. But that doesn't come with the bag, but guess... I wonder if you guys are like, okay, that's a deal breaker, whether it has the bag or not to it. But they have the one through four collection here, and then they have the five through eight up here. Which is better? One through four or five through eight? My opinion, five through eight. But goddamn, do I like one through four. Ah, that's a tough one, man. I'm curious as to what you guys think, think about that one. They also have a two-movie collection of Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. They have that. They have Jaws as well. So some interesting stuff there. They do have that with the cinch bag, which is actually a pretty cool idea and not bad prices, though. They do have those. And a lot of these other ones that have the free digital movie only on Voodoo, they have a lot of these ones here as well. And I'm noticing they have... This here, which I was really intrigued by. The seven movie outlaw con collection for Smokey and the Bandit. Now, a while back I showed you they had like a three movie DVD set of Smokey and the Bandit. And I've seen those three flicks. First two is really good. The third one, nah, I have some issues with that one. But I thought to myself, wait a minute. Seven movies worth of Smokey and the Bandit? Did they actually do seven and... Yeah, they actually did. Bandit, Bandit Goes Country, Bandit, 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 Beauty and the Bandit, and Bandit, Bandit, Silver Angel. You have got to be fucking kidding me. They actually made four more Bandit movies that I know nothing about. Oh, they were TV movies. Spread Bandit Mania to a whole new generation. That is very interesting. I'm not going to lie, man. I I only know the first three Bandit movies. I do not know anything about the TV movies whatsoever. I know literally nothing about them. Are they good? It almost looks like that's like Christy Brinkley. Like a... Is that the chick from like Saved by the Bell or something? Like, I have no idea about these other four Bandit movies. I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm actually really intrigued by this. 
because I kind of want to know more about these four unknown bandit movies that I literally know crap all about, guys. I mean, let me know what you guys think about that. Have you seen these ones? Are they even any good? Like, what is going on, man? Like, like a Smoking the Bandit movie with Albert Reynolds, to me, is not really a Smoking the Bandit movie at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't quite know if they're even connected to the first three movies. So weird, man. And what weird names. This must have been back in the day when, like, TV movies were, like, really popular. I, I like the artwork on the on the cover, but so weird, dude. Hmm. Definitely gotta let me know about that, that one, man. I was also seeing a couple other things which is interesting to, to me. I'm noticing they have a Casper 3 movie collection, which is actually kind of interesting to me because the first Casper movie I love. It, it was one that I watched when I was a kid. I love that mo movie to death, man. Really great flick. One of the first times I actually ever saw Christina Ricci in a film and love the shit out, out of her in this, man. And, and the same with Devin Sawa. Great, but I've never seen the other two flicks. Casper, A Spirited Beginning, and Casper's Scare School. Ooh, creepy. I've never heard of these ones. I gotta admit, with some of these movies, man, like, the first movie is really good, and then they try to kind of do these straight-to-DVD movies or television flicks, and it kind of waters it down, man. Uh, like I said, I've never heard of these two ones, but I have a feeling that they don't stack up to the first Casper movie. Am I wrong on that? Definitely let me know about that one. The first one's classic, but outside of that, I don't know if I could actually recommend those two. I have a feeling they're not even close to the goodness of the first Casper movie. They have that, and then I'm noticing one other thing over here. And that is this Beethoven 8 movie complete collection. Now, this really intrigues me because I actually, back when I was a kid, I watched that first Beethoven movie and I watched Beethoven second. And I really love both of those flicks, man. Beethoven is a really fun sort of romp dog comedy I, I actually really enjoy that one a lot man and of course saint bernard they're absolutely gorgeous they're beautiful beautiful dogs man i like the comedy of it i like sort of the, the the heartwarming tale between a family and the dog like i thought that was cool and beethoven second where beethoven falls in love i i thought that was cool man i i really did i thought that was really nice the other ones I've heard of Beethoven's Third, and I've heard of Beethoven's Fourth. Of course, I've never seen those ones. Beethoven's Fifth, Beethoven's Big Break, Beethoven's Treasure, and Beethoven's Christmas Adventure. Gotta admit, I've never seen any of those ones. See, after a while... See, man, as I said with Casper, or even the same thing with Sword Heard of Smokey, is that... After a while, the sequels kind of get watered down. The same thing with sort of Air Bud. If you guys remember Air Bud, like the first Air Bud was really cool. And then the second Air Bud was kind of cool. And then they kind of kept doing them. And I'm like, that's kind of overkill and you don't really need to do it. And the same with Beethoven. Like the first two are great. And I highly recommend the first two. The ones after that, not so sure about those. I mean, I love dog films. I think those are great. Things like Turner and Hooch and and K-9 and stuff, stuff like that. Really great flicks, man. And again, the first two are immensely awesome, but not quite sure about the other six in the collection. Hmm. St. Bernard's are beautiful, but maybe only two films worth of St. Bernard's are, are worth it. Definitely let me know what you think of that one, guys. Just thought it was kind of interesting. Other than that, not not bad selection here. Some pretty cool stuff to, to check out. And again, all of this stuff comes with that bonus digital movie on voodoo and the top stuff here comes with that interesting sort of universal cinch bag which is actually not bad either and some really cool prices not bad here definitely was interested in this little area some cool interesting unique titles and stuff i definitely had not heard of man not bad this week especially here all right let's head out it's not bad this week here at this walmart guys it's not bad at all i mean mind you 
it beats the hell out of last week when we literally saw nothing new at all. They were devoid of anything to show off last week. So this is a much needed upgrade for more stuff to show off. Definitely, definitely worthy. Thank God, man. I mean, yes, I, I was hoping to kind of see The Wretched. It, it's a big enough sort of title that I figured maybe they'd have it, but I figured we're going to see it at some other stores. So, yeah, I'd like to see it, but we still got some really great stuff. New releases, TV shows, of course, some really great and interesting exclusive stuff as well. Some universal exclusives and some interesting unknown TV movie stuff that I'd never heard of before. Very interesting, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And that Four Kids and It still haunts me to this day. I won't give in, I promise. Ugh. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's head to the next location and see what they got. All right, everybody. We are at our second location, Target. Now, before we go in, man, I got to talk about this. Okay, I got to. Because truth be told, I didn't even believe it until I looked this up, man. So one of my subscribers, thank, thank you, Griff, by the way, man. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. I was told about some sort of kindergarten cop controversy. And I'm like thinking to myself, well, wait a minute, kindergarten cop? Like the Arnold Schwarzenegger flick? And I'm like, what, what went on here? So I had to look this up. So I ended up actually looking this up on my phone and I couldn't believe this, man. Okay, so in Portland, apparently, there's some kind of like drive-in movie series that that they were going to do, right? And the first movie they were going to do was Kindergarten Cop, right? It was filmed in the area and it's coming up on its 30th anniversary. And at some point you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, man, 30 years is nuts, man. It's great for that movie. Great that it's still recognized to this day. It's harmless. What the hell, man? But no, not at all, because then there was controversy because, well, it's a movie about cops and it's glorifying cops and that they're the saviors. And it was a whole huge controversy over it. And I was like, are you, are you kidding me, man? And then I read this even more, and this really shocked me. So I'm going to read some of this to you guys, okay? The outrage over the film choice apparently began when Portland author Lois Levine criticized the film, tweeting that now is a weird time to revive Kindergarten Cop. Levine outlined her argument further. It's true, Kindergarten Cop is only a movie. So are Birth of a Nation and Gone with the Wind. But we recognize films like those are not good family fun. They are relics of how pop culture feeds racist assumptions. Because despite what the movie shows, in reality, schools don't transform cops. Cops transform schools. And in an extremely detrimental way. Are, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Kindergarten cop, we're... We're we're going to compare Kindergarten Cop to Birth of a Nation? Really? This is what we're going to do? Oh my god. There's literally a little kid in that movie that says, you know, boys have penises, girls have vaginas. I'm like, we're supposed to compare this to Birth of a Nation or Gone with the Wind? It's a family action comedy that is what this movie is okay i am sorry i maybe you guys disagree with me maybe you're gonna rail on me fair enough man but come on dude why this this whole cancel culture thing is going overboard dude it's overboard come on man why what what in the literal fuck like is going on here man like at a certain point, this is just getting ridiculous. There are certain things that I thought, okay, I agree with them on, but now we're going overboard. We're, we're canceling Kindergarten Cop. Actually, at the end of the movie, I think he quits being a cop and wants to be a teacher. 
what, what the hell? Like, like, what is going on here? What is next? What are we going to cancel next, man? Because this is getting ridiculous, dude. You know, high schoolers hating on American Pie for some weird reason. You know, Gone with the Wind. I, you know, I've seen certain episodes of TV shows now that are that are being uh, completely wiped from these di- them from these digital platforms. And now, and now, apparently, if you have a drive-in series, you can't show Kindergarten Cop because Lord knows because it's it. If there's a cop saving a little kid from an abusive dude, then that's a bad thing. What is going on here, man? Literally, what in the literal fuck is going on, man? I, I, I am sorry, man. I don't agree with this. And I don't agree how far we're taking this cancel culture stuff, man. At a certain point, I get it. But, man, we, we got to... We got to tread lightly. Because I understand that Kindergarten Cop came out a long time ago. And that it's not what society technically is now, but it doesn't need to be, man. It it doesn't. We're 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 overthinking this. We're overdoing this. And at, at a certain point, like I just can't get on board with the cancel culture stuff anymore. At a certain point, I'm just done, man. And this is this might be the point where I start to draw the line. I'm like, dude, it's a fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger film. And and it's him protecting kids, and we're and we're just gonna cancel it because it's cops. I can't get it, dude. I, I honestly can't. If you guys have your opinions, definitely let me know. This just irritates me and frustrates me all to hell. I just don't get it. I honestly don't. If you guys do, let me know, man, because this just really is so bizarre to me, man. In the meantime, well, Target does have at least a few releases coming out this week that are worthy of them hopefully getting some of the stock in, maybe some TV stuff, and maybe seeing the wretched. Well, let's see what Target has. Only way to find out head inside so let's give it a go all right everybody we are in at target and the first thing i'm seeing over here is they have the blu-ray dvd digital of the high note for 22.99 the dvd for 16.99 right here and you know when i was thinking about this movie i was thinking about dakota johnson and i got to admit that Dakota Johnson is really likable, man. I, she, she's just a likable actress, and I really like what she does, man. I, I think she's actually... I think she's much better than people really give her credit for, because I kind of put her in the same category as uh, Kristen Stewart, because, you know, you get saddled into this... into this series that people don't really take seriously, and they mock... I mean, the Fifty Shades films are not good. Let's let's be real here, and I'm being nice. And unfortunately, all they ever did was they sort of gave people an impression of Dakota Johnson that I don't think is entirely accurate. I I just think they kind of saw her as melodramatic and really cheesy, and that's all they really kind of showed off with her. But I think she's so much better than that. I mean... A lot of the other stuff I've seen, whether it's Suspiria or The Peanut Butter Falcon, uh, uh, Bad Times at the El Royale, I mean, there's a lot of really great flicks that she's been in, that she's done a really great job in her acting abilities, and I feel like she's still trying to prove herself to this day, and I hope one day she can kind of, like, change people's minds. I, I think she's slowly doing that. With movies like Suspiria and everything that really open up her range, but I think she's got a ways to go because people are always going to look at her as either Don Johnson's da- daughter, or they're always going to look at her. Oh, that chick that you know was in was in the red room and got naughty, PG thirteen style. I mean, it's all they're really ever going to know of her, and I hope she really changes people's minds. I think that Kristen Stewart has done that over time. And I hope that Dakota Johnson can prove people wrong as well. And I think this movie does a really good job of showing her abilities and showing her likability and what she's able to accomplish and how she can pull off a believable romance instead of, like, a, like, PG-13 porno. So, yeah, I, I, I think she's got a little ways to go, but I think she can definitely prove it, though. I think she can, or at least I hope she she does, but she was really good in this movie. And again, like I said, it's not for everybody, but if you guys are into these type of movies, it's got a good romance to it, the drama is really nice, and the singing is really good. So if you guys 
are into this, I do highly recommend the high note, man. It's not bad. Actually, it's really in, in, enjoyable for like an hour, 40, 45 minutes. It breezed by. I can't say I love all these type of movies, but this one was, well, definitely a high note. And then the next thing I'm seeing over here, guys, is I have the DVD of Archive for $12.99. Very nice futuristic cover right there. Death is not the end. Well, that's what we'd like to believe it is, guys. <laughs> so I got a chance to watch this thing on Amazon Prime. And the reason why I wanted to watch it, because I really sort of liked the, the premise of it. I thought it was very intriguing. And the cover sort of kind of sold me. So I was like, okay, I'm going to give this one a shot. Basically, it's about this guy who in the future there's something that's happened with the world and he is he is working on an AI that's an equivalent to a human this woman that was very important to him in his life that ended up dying and wanting to bring her memories and bring her back to life and he's sort of working on this and it's sort of the ethical and the scientific sort of dilemmas and the boundaries and the controversies that go along with that i really enjoyed this this was not bad man i mean it's not big budget science fiction it's it's very low budget there's like there's like a weird sort of like like robot like like the robot right here that you could tell it's it's some person in a really cheapo suit almost like something out of lost from space and you're like, okay, man, you guys definitely don't got the budget for, for this shit. But I like the ideas. I like the big, bold ideas that, that they go with. And the rights and the wrongs of, of doing this. And what rights do you have to do this kind of research? Very fascinating. Very interesting. We get sort of a glimpse of the futuristic world slightly. I like sort of the the sort of old school but yet science fiction tech it reminds me of a lot of like movies like moon and a lot of other sci-fi flicks like that that don't exactly have the hugest budget in the world but they're very clever in how they do it i thought theo james was really good here i thought stacy martin was was really fantastic as well it was very interesting what I will say about this movie is that there is a twist at the end of the film. And I'm not going to lie. At first, I was a little confused by it. But then I, I kind of wrapped my head around it. And I don't know whether people are really going to like that ending. Because you go throughout the film believing one thing. And then it changes into something completely different. And sometimes that works really well. Like the movie I talked about last week, Coma. I thought that did did it pretty well, but this one, I think that ending, I don't know if you really needed that twist in it. I thought it was already good as, as it was. The twist kind of felt like it got in the way a little bit, but outside of that sort of twisty ending, the science fiction here is really cool. I like what they were able to do with the budget, the sort of futuristic way that the AI looks, some of the like old school ro robotic effects there. Kind of like that. It looks really in interesting. It's not as good as some of the like other sci-fi stuff that has come down the pike, you know, in the past few years. But if you're looking for an interesting sci-fi flick, something new, Archive isn't bad. It's a little slow, not extremely exciting, but it has some really interesting ideas. And for an hour, 40 and change, actually, it's not so bad, man. Actually... It, I actually enjoyed this one. It wasn't, wasn't too bad, honestly. They also have the Blu-ray digital of I Am Vengeance Retaliation for $14.99. Revenge. Just double down. Very nice. A little Vinnie Jones action and Stu Bennett. Not sure I really know Stu Bennett, honestly. Hmm. Former professional wrestler. Well, that's why I haven't watched professional wrestling in, God, almost 20 years. It's been a long time, man. So some of these newer wrestlers, I have no idea who the heck they are. Um, 
sequel to I Am Vengeance. Well, I'd never watched the first I Am Vengeance, so I would probably be lost as shit with the sequel, I would imagine. It's interesting, sort of like action thriller type of movie. I mean, it's, it's fine. I mean, there's so many wrestlers that are trying to get into the game of acting. It kind of, you know, once sort of The Rock made it big and was huge in Hollywood, it seems like everyone has tried to, like, recreate his steps. And only, like, maybe John Cena has done it, but... I guess why not all these other people come out of the woodwork and try? That doesn't look half bad, but I mean, the person to watch here is Vinnie Jones. Vinnie Jones is really badass, and he's really cool, dude. Really great. Vinnie Jones doesn't get the credit he really deserves, but he's a fantastic actor, man. I like a lot of his work. Hmm. Not bad. I guess if you're looking for a little action thriller goodness with former pro wrestlers, and there's a lot of these type of flicks that, that are like this, why not add another? I am vengeance retaliation. And then over here, and I definitely was not expecting this one, guys. They have the Blu-ray digital of the 45th anniversary, my God, man, of the Rocky Horror Picture Show for $12.99, the DVD only for $7.99. I didn't know this was actually coming out this week. I did not know about this, this one. That's actually a really nice surprise, man. 45 years, man. Amazing, dude. Wow. Don't dream it. Be it. Fantastic, man. Give yourself over to absolute pleasure. Oh, look at that. Oh, fantastic. Oh, my God, man. This, this movie... Dude, I love this movie. I really do. I watch this movie... At a very young age. This is another one of those movies that my mother and father taped on VHS long ago. And, and, and I watched it. And probably at a young age, I probably shouldn't have been watching the Rocky Horror Picture Show. But it was so good, man. And it, it, it influenced me in a lot of ways. And really made me tolerant of a, of a lot of different types of, of people. And this was one of the first m movies that actually made me fall in love with the aspect of musicals. That was one of the first times that I actually did it. And the music here is infectious, it's amazing. The singing is is by far, you know, out of this world. Tim Curry, man, Dr. Frankenfurter, what a character that is, man. And Tim Curry, dude, he did a phenomenal job. He, this this movie, if it wasn't for Tim Curry, in this role, I don't know if the movie would be half as good as it is. He embodies his character from head to toe, man. He he is amazing here. And the stuff that he goes through in this role, the stuff that he wears, is really, really revealing, man. Wow, dude. He, he went for it in a big, bad way, and it paid off, man. I think this is a phenomenal movie, and... I have actually went to three midnight screenings of this film. I first one I went with my friend Justin, then the second one I went with Bob, and that was an experience, man. Talk talk about getting rice and toast in every single corner and crevice of your body, man. That was quite interesting. You had that, and then I went another time with with my girlfriend. She loves this movie as well. It's fantastic. I I love going to the midnight screenings, dude. When they 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 yell like, like you know, slut and asshole, and and they're throwing the popcorn and they're throwing the rice and the toast and the toilet paper and 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 yelling at the screen. It is it is a blast. If you have never went to a midnight screening of Rocky Horror Picture Show, I highly recommend it, man. We're coming up on October, so somebody's got to have it, dude. But it is uh, it is so amazing. This this movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. It honestly is, man. 45 years and it still impresses to this very day. Amazing. My mother is one of the people that got me into this movie. Damn glad that that, that she did. So amazing. They did that they ended up doing that um, that TV remake one, which, by the way, that TV remake was really terrible, dude. I did not like that. They they tried their best, but pale comparison to this movie by far, man. So good, dude. This is a fantastic musical. It's it was a really it's a really great movie that 
t talks about tolerance and and the different worlds of like of of like gender it's it's so fantastic man now i have to admit to you guys my girlfriend wants to do a midnight screening with me and she wants to dress up great right she wants to dress up as magenta or one of the chicks you know whoever it's fine but she wants me to dress up as dr frankenfurter yeah she wants me to get into the stockings and the high heels and the the corset and the wig and the makeup and everything she wants me to dress up as frankenfurter in a big bad way and i i so don't know dude I would have to shave in areas where a man literally should not have to shave. No goddamn way, man. A hell of a lot of nair would be used. But could you honestly see me with the fishnet stockings and and the makeup and Oh my god. Going on stage and being like, "I'm just a sweet transvestite." <laughs> That would have to be filmed. Oh my god. I, okay, look, I would do it. If my girlfriend dressed up, if Bob dressed up, because I always thought that Bob should dress up as sort of like the, um, uh, like the meatloaf character. He should dress up as Eddie. I always thought that would be really cool. If he did it too, I might go ahead and attempt it. But oh man, me dressing up like Dr. Frankenfurter, like Tim Curry. I I so can't see it guys. Oh man. Let me know if you if you see it, dude. I I so don't, man. Oh my god, I so don't see see that shit. It'd be it'd be fun, but it'd be mega mega weird. Whoa man. Yikes. They have that. They also end up having the DVD of the limited series event for Are You Afraid of the Dark? Now this is new to DVD for twelve nine ninety nine. And I heard that they were doing a new version of Are You Afraid of the Dark? But I don't watch Nickelodeon and I don't have cable, so it never really it never really interested me to want to try to find out. But I'm actually a fan of like the old school Are You Afraid of the Dark? I'm a fan of that old school stuff back when when I was a kid, back when I was watching Nickelodeon many 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 years ago. But I'm actually really happy to see a new version of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Because I've always talked about how I love horror and how sort of I grew up in a different time of horror where we would we would watch all kinds of stuff, things that maybe we shouldn't have, have watched. But I, I know there's a lot of sensitivity now with a lot of parents showing kids certain things, and there's not a lot of really great gateways into horror for for young kids. And... I think things like Goosebumps or Are You Afraid of the Dark are really great entries for young kids to get into the horror realm and to start to experience it. So I'm, it's actually really cool to see something like this, man. I really honestly have to admit it's really cool to, to see that. And it also has three fan favorite episodes from the classic series, which is really cool uh, also. Like I said, I don't know how the new episodes are. Are they good? Are they bad? I, I hope they are, man. I hope they're really inventive and creative, and I hope... A lot of people got into it and I hope they continue this because again I want to see more stuff for kids to get into the the horror field I mean you can't just go right in and show them the exorcist or a nightmare on Elm Street or, or, or that shit I mean some do and it's a really extreme way to do it but you know sometimes you need a little bit more subtlety and I think this is a really great way to, to do it guys that's my honest opinion uh, I mean definitely let me know what you guys guys think it's it's really glad that they're redoing it though for a new generation that is really cool and i love the cover man oh so awesome that's really cool dude great man not bad selection so far definitely was not expecting this one very interesting and now and now that disney sort of owns this can we officially call tim curry's dr frankenstein a disney princess can we ah all the unanswered questions, but I'd love to see it be a Disney princess. Not bad, guys. Some in interesting stuff. Let's see if they got 
anything else. And then we are over on the TV side and I am seeing they have the complete seventh season of The Blacklist on DVD for $29.99. And as I said at Walmart, I love me some Spader, man. This dude is absolutely classic. And I got to admit, man, there are movies and TV shows that I honestly had literally no interest in watching whatsoever. But because of Spader, I give it a chance, man. You know, I think the first time that I ever actually really noticed Spader was was when I watched that great, great 80s nostalgic movie, man, Mannequin. Dude, when I watched Mannequin for the first time, and it's so weird because Spader in that movie is so not the spader that people really know of he's he's very uptight he's he's like has his hair like watered down uh he's he's just wearing these big old like 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 goggle glasses such a prick man but so good in the in that movie dude he's great in it and then there's so many others man i mean pretty in pink less than zero uh secretary crash Stargate, of course, Star Stargate is really classic. He was great in Stargate. Is that, uh, of course, Two Days in the Valley, which that's a really great movie that no no one ever talks about. Uh, the Watcher and so many other ones, man. He's great, dude. And and in fact, one of my favorite legal shows that I love so much, uh, Boston Legal. He was part of that. And even before that, he was he was on uh, the, uh, the practice, I believe. So he's he does TV. He's also he, he was also in a the eighth season of The Office. So he's done so much stuff, man. TV, film. He's great in almost everything he does, man. He's fantastic. So I, I've been meaning to want to watch the the blacklist, but. I'm always behind on so many things. There's so many movies and TV shows that I have to watch. And, and God, I'm so behind on so much stuff, man. But this is one of the reasons. Like, Spader is so good. And he could play he could play the goofy guy. He could play dark. He could play sinister. He could play a complete prick. Like, the guy is so good in everything he does, man. And... I've only heard really good things about him on this show and everybody has said that he makes this show in a big bad way and I can definitely see it so if he's as good as everybody is saying he is in this show then I definitely have to at some point give this thing a look man definitely let me know what you think and what do you think of the master class himself James Spader definitely let me know guys not half bad man no other new TV seasons that I'm seeing here just that, but actually not bad this time around at Target. I was fearing it, but I'm glad I was wrong. Not bad. Let's head out. I'm not going to lie, guys. I was so worried coming into this Target, man. I was extremely worried because I thought to myself, I'm like, oh my God, it's not exactly like the most plentiful week for physical media. I mean, it's not crazy slow but it's not crazy busy either so i'm like oh god well oh help me lord and the physical media gods definitely came through for me man target not have bad this week some interesting titles and releases that we didn't see over at the first walmart i mean no surprise there sometimes that walmart doesn't always carry some of the indie titles but sometimes neither does this store either so I was actually really pleasantly surprised by that, man. And the 45th anniversary of Rocky Horror Picture Show, which completely blew me away, man. 45 years, definitely earned. Great, great, man. Of course, we didn't really see The Wretched. I was hoping, but Target UD is not big on, on carrying a lot of horror. But I was hoping. We're still on the hunt for Wretched. But other than that, actually really surprised how good it was this week here. Uh, not always this good, trust me, and it won't be every single week, but, uh, well, I'm happy at least this week we found some good media. Not half bad, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's head next place and see what goodies we can find. All right, everybody, we are at our third location, the second Walmart. We're going to go in and check out if there's any interesting indie flicks worth giving a chance to. But before we go in... I wanted to talk about a trailer with you guys for a new HBO series, and that is Raised by Wolves. 
man, this trailer has been getting a lot of play, and I wanted to check it out, and wow, I can kind of see why. Basically, the premise of, from what the series is going to be, is basically, uh, Humanity has been destroyed by war and a lot of other issues, and they are trying to rebuild again, repopulate the world, and these these sort of human-like AIs and, and robots are sort of helping raise these kids and these human beings and protect humanity. And all the while that they're doing this, there's also sort of a sinister underbelly to what the true intentions of these artificial intelligence is. Are they truly there to protect us? Can they easily be manipulated? Uh, is there other, is there other sort of nefarious purposes that are going on? There's a lot of really interesting sort of subtext within the trailer, and. Man, it, it's so interesting to think that humanity lives and breathes through technology anyways. Our cell phones and computers and, and how we live. But to think that between life and death, there is literally an AI that is, is helping us guide our lives. And we're supposed to just put our trust in them. And it's so interesting and so fascinating, and I think the trailer is really unique, man, and really dark. Because it's like, on one hand, there's this, this, you know, almost like robot, looks exactly like us, hair, skin, looks exactly like you and I, but is not. And is almost very emotionless, telling a little story like fairy tale story to kids at the same time these dark images of these these robots attacking other people and being manipulated and there's a there's just very interesting contrast man i think it looks really cool man i think it looks really interesting i love very dark sci-fi and this is going to be directed by ridley scott and ridley scott he knows science fiction man alien blade runner so many other opportunities and so many things that he's done in his in his career. The problem is he's getting a lot of flack, and rightfully so. I mean, look, Prometheus and Alien Covenant are not exactly movies that inspire confidence that he can still pull off very dark and gritty and brilliant science fiction. But I think with the right material... And I think with the right guiding hand, I think he can still do really well directing science fiction. I think if the episodes are written really well, he still knows how to really shoot a film and make it look beautiful and haunting. I think he can still pull it off. I honestly do. I think the trailer looks really brilliant and interesting. And I think overall, look, man, more dark sci-fi in the world ain't half bad, man. It looks cool, very thought-provoking, brings up a lot of very interesting ideas and dilemmas. And I think that's some of the best science fiction, man. I honestly do. So I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if you guys are or not. Definitely let me know. In the meantime, let's head into the second Walmart and see what goodies we can find. All right, we are in at the second Walmart, and on the side here, there's actually a few interesting things to show off. The first thing I'm seeing is they have the Blu-ray DVD combo pack of The Haunting of Alcatraz for $14.96, the DVD for $9.96, and look at that cover. What a great cover that is, man. Inspired by actual events at America's most notorious jail. That ghost seems mighty pissed off, man. Whoa. Let's see what this thing is about. Wait a minute, he takes a job at Alcatraz to gain the trust fund? Dude, I don't care how much fucking money is in the trust fund. You ain't getting my ass to, to take a job at fucking Alcatraz. Fuck that. Jesus Christ, you gotta be fucking joking me, man. And and now there's haunted spirits, and he's... Oh, Jesus, dude. 
Dude, I, I know money is money, man, but come on, dude. Your life has to count for something. Shit. Oh, dude. Man, this guy is mighty fucked. Holy shit. Goodness gracious, man. You know what? There's a lot of really great movies about Alcatraz. I don't know if there's many about sort of the hauntings of Alcatraz. You know, you, you see so many haunting movies. Haunting of Connecticut and haunting of this and haunting of that. But Alcatraz is kind of an interesting one. I don't know if this is a good one, though. But it's interesting with sort of Alcatraz in the background. Hmm. Stupid characters making stupid decisions in Alcatraz. Hmm. I wonder how this one turns out. Then I'm seeing over here they have the Blu-ray DVD combo pack of Nuclear for $14.96. The DVD for $9.96. Huh. Very interesting. Look at that. I like the cover. The cover ain't half bad, honestly. Hmm. What is this about? Your mother on the run following an act of violence committed by her. Huh, interesting. Pass or the haunting, creepy kids, nuclear reactors that can easily turn you to dust. You know, not half bad, I should say, right? That's a recipe for success. Nuclear, okay. Oh, it doesn't look half bad. A lot of friggin' dead bodies, though. Holy shit. Wow, nuclear. Hmm, interesting. Cover doesn't look half bad, though. Synopsis is okay. They've got that. They also have... Oh, it's got moved up here. They got the Blu-ray DVD combo pack of Circus Noel for $14.96 and the DVD for $9.96. Feel the magic. Cover almost looks like something out of, like, like the Chronicles of Narnia or, or something. Like, that's like, like Aslan joined the circus or some shit. Hmm, interesting. 12 year old Carol is a popular vlogger who connects the online world because I didn't know she exists. She didn't say Glorm is okay. Oh, jeez. She tells her mother that she's leaving to join the Sir Glorm. No. Okay. Good luck to you. Her, wait a minute. Her, her parents eventually realize she's gone? Fuck, she told her mother, and her mother said, okay, did she somehow, like, like, have short-term memory loss? Like, what the fuck? That's interesting. So, kind of like, uh, kind of like life on a circus, and sort of making the friends, and, and, you know, finding your yourself in the process, and your confidence, kind of that type of movie. Interesting. A girl who's been ignored her life finally gains some acceptance with this circus group. I gotta admit, there's some circus movies that I like, like, you know, uh, uh, Pee Wee's uh, Big Top Adventure there, which I really did, did like. There's a few other ones, that, that Robert Pattinson movie, I really like. I think that Robert Pattinson movie is actually really unique. I really like that, that one quite a, quite a bit. And there's a few others that are not half bad either. Hmm. Interesting. That doesn't look half bad, though. I guess Noel. Got that. They've also got the Blu-ray DVD combo pack of V8 for $14.96 and the DVD for $9.96. Hmm. Not a bad cover. Pretty nice. Revenge of the Nitros. V8-2. Was there, like, a V8-1? And I never heard of it? Maybe. Hmm. A team beat the Barracudas and came one step closer to getting to train at the legendary castle where elite children learn racing and 
disapproves. Their next rival are the Nitros, a group of competitive girl racers who kidnap Robin and convince him to join the gang. What will the rest of the V8 know? Oh my god, all of the mystery and, and intrigue of childhood racing. Very fantastic. I'm assuming this is a sequel since it says V8 2, but I don't remember the first V8, so I'm a little bit kind of skeptical of that. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's sort of just like a racing competition, so it's kind of like Fast and the Furious, but competition, and they're just like racing. I got the need, the need to go 20 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, how fast are these kids going? Are they going like 20, 25? Are they going like 50? Like what's, what's, what's are they doing exactly? I don't know. Very interesting. Uh, an interesting kids racing movie. I do like some racing stuff. I mean, you know, obviously Fast and the Furious stuff, but that really at some point sort of switched. It was no longer racing. It was kind of like, you know, they're doing spy, uh, you know, espionage stuff. I mean, you know, stuff like the Gumball Rally, Cannonball Run, you know, stuff like that. I mean, the old school stuff. I don't really get into the the new stuff because, you know, the, you know, kids are now badass and they're using Nitro and they're using nitro on those motherfuckers. Those. They're using nitro on that. I, I would fear for those kids' lives more than anything else. Shit. I'm sure it's fun, though. Hmm. Then, I'm also seeing they do have I Am Vengeance Retaliation, the Blu-ray for $14.96, and the DVD for $12.96. They do have that. And they also have, ah, the Blu-ray digital of the 45th anniversary of Rocky Horror Picture Show and the DVD as well. Fantastic movie. Of course it is. Oh, man. I got to admit, when I saw that remake that they did, the TV remake, man, I remember watching that with Nick, and we were so vastly disappointed. It it just felt like such a watered-down version of Rocky Horror. And unfortunately, with Rocky Horror, you just can't really do... See, unfortunately, a lot of sort of other versions of it are extremely watered down. The TV stuff is, and it just, it's not as good as what it could be otherwise. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sometimes, sometimes other versions are, are, are better, other remakes, but this is a timeless classic. It honestly can't be beat, man. And Susan Sarandon back in the day, Barry Bostwick, Tim Curry... That's a great cast, dude. You can't really beat that, man. And in fact, crazy enough, here's here's the weird thing about it, guys, is that... So, I was at a horror convention once. Barry Boswick was there. He was selling his underwear. He was selling his fucking tidy whities that he wore in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I was just a little bit t- tempted because I'm like, that is a weird collector's item to have. That is weird. I'm like, where would I be putting that, motherfucker? But I thought, no, no. I think somebody did buy them, but... Uh, uh, I was tempted, but no, nah, no, nah, dude. Still very interesting. Hmm, not half bad. A few interesting, unique titles over on this end. Let's see if they got anything on the other side. And we are on the other side, and... A little empty over on this end, guys. But a couple things I'm seeing. They do have the DVD of G-Lock for $14.96. Not a bad sort of sci-fi futuristic cover. In the last days of Earth comes a new beginning. Stephen Moyer, Casper Van Dien, and John Reese davies Oh, yeah, baby. Not bad cast. Stephen Moyer, man, from True Blood. Honestly, I, I, outside of True Blood, I mean, I know he's done other stuff, but I haven't really seen him do much else. I mean, I just remember him as Bill from True Blood, and he was always known for that one thing he would always do in True Blood. He would always call out for Sookie. He'd be like, Sookie. Sookie. 
<laughs> Sometimes I was like, wait a minute, is he saying sucky? Like, like no, 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 he's saying sucky, damn it. Uh, yeah, that's what he was basically known for, pining over sucky. But uh, apparently he's long past those, va those vampire lusting days and uh, on to sci-fi goodness. Hmm. Let's see what this is about. Earth is gone. Will mankind be next? Will they indeed? Hmm. Interesting. Two people that really don't like each other that are trying to kill one another that have to join forces in order to survive. Very interesting. Hmm. I actually kind of like the sci-fi look of this. I like the colors here and it looks like the suits and everything. The the ship itself. That looks really interesting. Low budget sci-fi goodness. You know what this kind of reminds me of? Just the, the look of the cover and the back and everything. Do you remember that uh, sci-fi movie with Spader called... Uh, oh boy, I forget the name. Oh yeah, Supernova. No Supernova, yeah. That, uh, that one. It kind of reminds me of Supernova. Kind of the, the look of it and, you know, kind of the cheesiness of it. I think I had Angela Bassett in it as well. I mean, it's not super high budget sci-fi action, but then again, this is straight to DVD. What the hell are you expecting, man? But, I don't know, it kind of looks okay. I mean, Casper Van Dien is more straight to DVD work. John Reese davies is definitely straight to DVD work now nowadays. And Stephen Moyer, well, he'll always have true blood. And Sookie. Very interesting. Uh, could be worth a watch, at least. Well, they do have that. And they also have the DVD of Archive. Now, I did show this over at Target. But it is worth men mentioning again that it is actually pretty decent sci-fi it's low budget sci-fi but i got to admit the the sort of situations and the dilemmas and everything and sort of the futuristic tech the ai stuff you know what it reminded me of actually it reminded me of ex machina which is which was i mean it's not as good as ex machina and it certainly doesn't have the same type of of, of effects as ex machina but it has that same type of ethical and scientific boundaries and should we and should we not sort of explore these type of ter territories it has that same sort of flavor to it so if you like that movie this is probably one that could be down your your alley just go in with checked expectations knowing you know it ain't the highest budgeted thing in the world but it's not bad either man hmm they do have that Unfortunately, they really have nothing else here. And crazy enough, guys, they do not have any of the wretched. They have none of it. Nothing of, of the of the wretched at all. They have none. I'm like, what the hell, dude? Nothing from, from, from the wretched. That really sucks, dude. Like, yet again, another place that does not have it. And here I thought the second Walmart might have it. Boy, was I wrong. Well, well better luck next time, I guess. All right, well... I try, guys. Still, a few interesting releases to check out. Not bad. Let's head out. So you're telling me they can carry fucking Twilight? Twilight? And some of these sold. Some of these editions have sold. Who the fuck is buying this shit? You're telling me they can carry Twilight, but they cannot get in the Wretched? What in the actual fuck? guys oh my god oh i swear to god i am not finding the ratchet this week i just have to start realizing that that probably is not going to happen guys oh boy man i'm still glad i came in here there is some unique movies worth checking out at least so that is at least one benefit of it and this week is kind of interesting it is a slower week but we're finding a lot of interesting and unique titles where we go not half bad though i wasn't expecting some of the stuff that we've seen so far so that is a pleasant surprise as well but uh still on the hunt for the wretched and i have a feeling we're probably not gonna get that guys uh, but hey twilight selling uh, let's head to the next location and see what they got all right everybody we are at our fourth 
and final location. I think you know what that is, and that is none other than the Beast Best Buy, baby. So, you know, we've seen some really interesting physical media this week. Some stuff that I've honestly been surprised by. Other things that are very unique, interesting artwork. Not half bad this week. And I'm kind of curious where the Beast is going to come in. Are we going to see some exclusives? Are we going to see some unique titles worth showing off? Are we finally going to see the Wretched? Jeez, I hope so. It did come out this week, but uh, nobody seems to have it. Uh, doubtful Best Buy will, but hey, we'll give it a look. All right, let's head in. Check it out. All right, everybody, we are in at Best Buy, and the first thing I'm seeing is they do have the complete seventh season of The Blacklist for $27.99. They do have that. Not bad special features there. Interesting. They have that. They have I Am Vengeance the Retaliation for $14.99. They do have that right there. And actually, not bad special features on this. Audio commentary, translation, delete and extended scene. That's not bad for like a straight to Blu-ray and DVD movie. Not bad on that one. They also have over here, they have this Blu-ray of Valley of the Gods for $14.99, which I have never heard of. Not bad cover. Worlds will collide. Josh Hartnett and John Malkovich. Not, not bad. What is this about? Sorry, Josh Hartnett, Bernie Zimmer, and John Malkovich. Valley of the Guns contrasts abundance and poverty through three separate storylines. She's a middle class writer, an eccentric trillionaire in a struggling Navajo community. Ooh, really? Well, that's interesting. So it's through three different tales, which I assume eventually sort of come together, that they tell about, you know, the rich versus the the poor, the one percent versus you know, people who are literally, you know, spending nights on the street, that type of stuff. Very interesting, man. Huh. I've never heard of this. I, I like Josh, Josh Hartnett. Josh Hartnett, of course, has kind of been absent from Hollywood for a while, but I really do like him and hope he's kind of on the upswing again. Malkovich, of course, Malkovich is fucking awesome. Come on. I mean, that's pretty much a guarantee right there. But this is an interesting movie. You know, with COVID and everything happening, you know, the rich have gotten richer. The poor have gotten poorer. And there's not many movies that really sort of deal with that. I think the last one that I saw that really dealt with such a major divide, or at least the one that got as much notice as I remember it being, was Crash. If you guys remember Crash, it wasn't like rich versus poor exactly, but it was, you know, the haves and the have-nots and people who have privilege and others who are judged more unfairly stuff like that that's really the last full one that i remember but there's a lot of tales of that type of stuff anyway that's not the first nor was it ever the gonna be the last one but huh it actually kind of looks interesting i like the cover it's not it's not half bad value the gods it's got a making of in a trailer if you guys know anything about this one definitely let me know looks interestingly enough though Hmm. And then over here I'm seeing they have the Blu-ray DVD digital of the high note for $22.99. Now, I was thinking about this, right? There's a lot of musicals out there that happen to be romance movies. But there's not many dramas that are technically about music, but are not musicals themselves that are also romance movies. Hmm, right? That's actually a very tricky, very small set of films that actually tick all of those boxes. I mean, look, there's a ton of musicals that have romance in them, but ones that are more about music and not musicals that have it? 
that's a rare breed in, indeed. And I was really thinking about this because, I mean, you have a movie like A Star Is Born, which is really, really great. Actually, any of the Star Is Born films are really great. I was also thinking of High Fidelity, which is really great as well. A movie that is about music and romance, but not technically a musical. And the other one that I was really thinking of, and one that, gee, not many people would even really talk about, is Music of the Heart from 1999. Remember that gem? I should say forgotten gem. That's not one many people talk about, and I kind of see why. It's a Wes Craven-directed film, and to be honest with you, like a lot of people who are fans of Wes Craven... I don't think a lot of them really go out of their way to remember Music of the Heart. But I actually went to the movie theater with my mother and, and saw that film, man. So that definitely takes me back. But those are the ones that I was thinking about. Ones that, like I said, are non-musicals, but also are about music, but have romance in them. Like I said, it's a select few of films out there that actually are part of that criteria and tick all of the boxes. If you know any that I don't know, definitely let me know. But the high note is definitely, I think, in good company and definitely a small patch of films indeed in that set for sure, man. But not a bad film. And if you're interested in, in romance and drama and interested in the music scene kind of being highlighted as well, not a bad flick to check out, man. Deleted, alternate ascended scenes inside the creation of the I know. The Grace Davis story, like I do, original song music. Not bad, bad features, not bad at all. That definitely worth checking out, man. Then I'm also seeing they have the 25th anniversary edition of Casper, the DVD for 1999. God, 25 years. I mean, I knew I, I liked the film. But, man, 25 friggin' years. That is kind of nuts. Ooh, with a nice lenticular slip. Not bad. Look at that. Hmm. Pretty cool. Actually, it has those two feature-length films as well. Hmm. You ain't screamed nothing yet. Oh, boy. Not that. They also end up having... This limited edition, only at Best Buy exclusive steelbook, Blu-ray di digital of Casper for $14.99. And this is actually really nice as well. I kind of like this. I didn't exactly know they were doing a limited edition steelbook of Casper of all things. But some of the ones that Best Buy has been doing lately have been quite interesting, man. Man. Like I said, man, this is, this is great. And this is actually another one of those films that, that really at a young age got me into horror got me into horror comedies in a lot of ways because casper is a horror comedy i mean yes it's it's not a horror comedy as you and i would generally talk about it but you know it's more of like a kid style one but it definitely got me into that idea of mixing the horror and the comedy together i thought the design of casper was really great i really like christina ricci here bill pullman is awesome as well uh, uh, Kathy Moriarty is really great also she's fantastic it's it, it's it's a really nice movie man it's one that I haven't revisited in a long time but again I really do love these old school all like PG PG 13 horror flicks that sometimes get forgotten but they influence me in a big bad way man and Casper is definitely one, one of them you also get here revealing Casper, deleted scenes, feature commentary with the director, and more. Not bad. God, it's been so long since I've seen this. That's a nice steelbook, actually. I like the the ghostly images there with the black background. That's not bad. And even the DVD is pretty cool, too, man. Well, that's not bad, bad either, man. 25 fucking years, man. Shit, I'm getting old. <laughs> And one last thing before we head out, guys, and that is the DVD only of the Rocky Horror Picture Show for $5.99 and the Blu-ray Digital for $12.99, the 45th anniversary of absolute pleasure. Yes, baby. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Oh, so good. 
and you know I was thinking about this like the Rocky Horror Picture Show has been on physical media quite a lot actually it seems like every five years they put out a new edition of Rocky Horror to celebrate the anniversary don't be surprised in another five years if we get the 50th anniversary of Rocky Horror Picture Show by far man most likely we're gonna get it to guarantee guys but this is actually one of the most visible titles that is on the format. I mean, really, honestly, it is. Along with Alien and Terminator and a lot of the other titles that are normally on the format all the time, Rocky Horror is one of those that has had many editions over many years, VHS, DVD, and Blu-ray. But unfortunately, not 4K. As you can see, there is no 4K edition here. Disney is not interested in doing 4K for Rocky Horror, and I think if done right, a 4K edition of Rocky Horror would be really, really great, man. I think it would be really fantastic. Mind-blowing with, with with the colors and everything. If done right, they it would be really s stunning. But unfortunately, Disney is not interested in upgrading a lot of their catalog titles, especially the 20th Century Fox ones. If this was 20th Century Fox still around and not owned by Disney, I think you would see a really great addition for the 45 years because there's been a lot of really cool additions of this. I actually already own Rocky Horror. I own the Digibook version with Tim Curry's face on the cover. I believe that one is out of print, like a lot of different editions of Rocky Horror is, but... I think Disney just sees movies like this now as sort of a cash cow. You know, hey, it's 45 years, hey, it's Rocky Horror, people seem to like it, so why the hell not? I'm hoping for the 50th anniversary they show a lot more love to Rocky Horror. I mean, what's great about all those really great additions that have come out in the, few, in the past is that they've always had some really cool bells and whistles to it. I mean, this has a hell of a lot of great special features, a lot of really great stuff here, but again... There's been so many really great additions out there beforehand... This one seems a little less, but it's Disney, and I think at this point, I think you can expect a lot of 20th Century Fox titles to get this type of same love. I mean, we've seen it already with some of the newer stuff that Disney put, put out that 20th Century Fox made, and now you're seeing it more with the older titles as, as well. I'm glad I have the edition that I have. I'm going to cherish that edition. But if you guys don't have it, this is still a really good edition to check out. And this is a movie that has survived 45 years, man. It is 45 years worth of a fan base. There's movie fans out there. They have, like, fan clubs of this. There's been midnight screenings since the very beginning of its, in, of its its inception on the big screen. Hell, my mother went to, like, a few mid midnight screenings when she was younger back in, like, the 70s, man. So, I mean, this has stuck with fans over the years. It's gained more of an appreciation over the years, especially, you know, with people who are questioning their genders and... You know, questioning their identities and Rocky Horror definitely speaks to, to them and I can see it quite a bit. It's really still a phenomenal film. It breaks a lot of, of bar barriers even to this day. Phenomenal flick. Tim Curry is absolutely classic here. It's absolutely an amazing film by far, man. Fantastic movie. And it's it's kind of interesting because... I know they did a sequel to Rocky Horror, which was Shock Treatment. I was never a fan of Shock Treatment. I know Shock Treatment has its fans, but I thought it was kind of a pale comparison to, to Rocky Horror, and it really felt kind of unneeded to, to, to me. Rocky Horror is still the classic, the one to watch by far, man. It's great. It really is fantastic. The, the music, the time warp, Sweet Transvestite, Faye Ray, so many really great moments, and I've had such wonderful experiences with this movie, going to midnight screenings, and I'll continue to have this. I will show this to my kids, and it'll just be something that's 
it has been a generational movie going down for many, many years, and it will continue to be for many generations to come. Such a wonderful movie, and if you guys haven't watched it, absolute classic. Definitely needs to be watched by far, man. Not have bad this week. I mean, some interesting titles to show off. Mind you, we still have not seen The Wretched. My God, man, no one has having that this week. Well, I tried, guys. Well, still not bad regardless, though. All right, let's head out. So the beast kind of delivered this week. I mean, it's not a crazy abundance of titles. There's only one exclusive that we saw this week, but to be fair, I didn't really think we were gonna get any exclusives this week. So one is better than none for sure. And to be honest with you, it is uh, slightly on the eh, slower side. So I was always thinking we weren't gonna see a lot here anyways, but still no wretched, man. Went to all the places and still no wretched, man. Ah, I thought we would have seen it, but well, I guess no one really carries a lot of these like IFC Midnight titles, which is really weird. I thought they would, especially here at Best Buy. I thought we were gonna see it, man, but ah, uh, I guess my luck this week ran out. The physical media gods can only help me so far. And uh, they didn't help me with the ratchet, unfortunately. Uh, it is well, what it is, guys. We still saw some decent stuff, regardless. And not a terrible week overall. Some interesting things to check out. And some interesting, unique titles to explore. Not half bad, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's head home and finish the video. All right, everybody. That'll do it for the Blu-ray and DVD out and about video this week and I'm sorry guys I failed you I failed all of you I didn't get to show off the wretched man but to be fair ain't no store had the wretched man nobody did I even went to a hell of a lot more places than you guys even saw in the video to just try to find it and nobody had nothing in fact I even went to that really cool unique store that I showed you guys not too long ago in the out and abouts the Soundgarden, I said, well, if anybody is going to have it, they have a lot of unique releases. They're going to have the Wretched. And nope, nope, they didn't have it at all. In fact, the guy behind the counter, he lo looked it up on the computer and he's like, oh, that was one of the releases that came out this week. And I'm like, am I the only one that keeps up with some of the releases that are coming out this week? <laughs> like, like, what the hell, man? So, you know, sometimes uh, it's it's one of those things where, you know, with the store, sometimes they can have really great releases and things that you don't expect. And then other weeks, they don't have certain titles where you just think to yourself, like, why not? Ugh. It happens week in, week out. You never know what you're going to find until you enter into each of the stores and, well... You don't see Ratchet at all, so hopefully they'll get it in within a week or two. Let's hope, guys. But that being said, man, there was still a lot of really great stuff to show off this week. Things that I was really happy to see, things that I was not expecting, cool artwork. So there was certain things to check out. I mean, look, it's not the biggest abundant week for physical media, but it's not exactly on the like least lower end we've, we've ever had before. As I said, I think these like next few months, most of this year is going to be a real gamble every single week with physical media. Some really great weeks, some not so great weeks, some things I'd love to see in the stores, some things we definitely aren't going to see in the stores. It's going to be wishy-washy it just honestly is but i am confident now to see a lot of these movies getting put on streaming services or movie theaters starting to open up open up so there is hopefully going to be more releases coming within maybe um early winter beginning of next year but in the meantime, it's going to be one of those sort of like, uh, you know, good week, bad week situations. But we'll always find at least something we're talking about, guys. But I hope you guys enjoyed it this week. If you did, definitely let me know. And hopefully you picked up something good. As far as I'm concerned, well, actually, the first thing I do want to show off is that I actually ended up picking up this release over at Best Buy. And I actually really wanted to pick it up because... God, I hadn't seen it in a really long time. And that is the 
steelbook of Casper. I actually picked it up, man. I, I kind of wanted to. So I'm going to actually open this sucker up and see what uh, is on the inside here and on the back, back side. I'm actually really curious. Again, man, it's been so long. This was a, a real part of my childhood, man. In fact, we had we had the um, the clamshell VHS for for Casper, and oh my god, when we got rid of the v, 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 VHSs, we got rid of those clamshells, and now I kind of feel bad that we got rid of those clamshells because they're probably worth uh, at least a little bit of money. But yeah, so we had that, but. So really unique and interesting. Let's see what, what, what we got, got here, man. Hmm. Casper. Not bad. And on the back side, ooh, they have the mansion. Very nice. Very nice there. And then we have, we have Casper. And then Casper, the bonus disc right there as well. Not bad. Okay. So, I am definitely looking forward to revisiting Casper. As I've kind of said before, to be honest with you guys, there's not a lot of really great, like, really great horror stuff for little kids to dive it into. I mean, there is some stuff as you get a little bit older, but little kids have very little. And to really dive into when it comes to horror. And Casper is actually something that is family friendly. It gets them into ghosts and into spooky stuff. So, not bad actually. I enjoyed it as a kid. I would assume other kids would, would, would as well. So, nice to have Casper in the collection. Actually, uh, actually a long time com coming. Good lord, it's gotta have been at least, I don't know, 20 years or so since I've seen the movie? Really dates me, man. So, Casper, I got that that one, guys. Now, I did get a few packages in the mail, which is definitely worth talking about. The first package I got is none other than a package from Dark Force Entertainment. Ooh, I, I, I was looking forward to picking this one up. Now, to be fair, I don't pick up everything from Dark Force. Not everything I actually want to pick up. But when this was announced, a lot of people were, were really excited about it. I had never heard of this title. But it's one of those sort of killer insect movies. And I, you know, I can't say I love all killer insect movies. But damn, when I find a really good one that I like, I really like it. And this one looks really cool, has Steve Rails back in it. So I'm like... Okay, I gotta give this this an opportunity and a chance, man. And, you know, with sort of limited edition slipcovers, yeah, it's right down my alley, so I took a chance on it. Can't wait to dive into this one. I also ended up getting a package from none other than Diabolic DVD. Now, this is actually a Scream Factory Collector's Edition title, and this is an early 2000s horror film and you know it's a really cool little ghost story i enjoy the flick it's been so long since i've watched it man i haven't watched this movie in man uh well over maybe 10 15 years maybe like it's it's been a long time man so i i am actually really interested to dive into this thing man and it's kind of n nostalgic for that early 2000 horror time period where there was a lot of cheesiness going on. And uh, this has a lot of cheese, but a lot of really cool spookiness to it. So I'm definitely interested to dive, dive into this one. Never thought this would be in the collection, but that is now. And last but certainly not least, I got a package in the mail from Shout Factory. Two more Scream Factory t titles on top of the Scream Factory I got from Diabolic. And these are two limited edition titles that I, I saw them get announced on Facebook and I'm like, oh wow, I, I, I didn't know they were putting these titles out. I didn't know that, so I, I was curious to check them out. One is a double feature and it's a sort of two women in prison flicks. Now, actually, I've actually started to really enjoy women in prison flicks. 
Like, if you've been keeping up with the pickup videos over the course of last year and and whatnot, you'll notice I, I picked up quite a bit of women in prison stuff. And actually, I've slowly been getting into more and more of those films. They're actually really enjoyable. Very sleazy, but really enjoyable. I'm really looking forward to this one. And another one that is sort of this sort of um, hooker, call girl movie, something like that. So And... I I don't know anything about this movie, but people were really interested in it, and and I'm like, oh, I looked up the trailer, and I'm like, the trailer looks kind of cool and really sleazy, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give it a go. Why not? So I, I decided to give it give it a chance. So I'm really excited to check this out. So two from here, one from here, and another from here. And not half bad, guys. Not half bad at, at, at all, of course. Casper too. But you guys will not get to find out exactly what I picked up until my Blu-ray pickup video which will drop next month. It'll show off all of the titles that I got for the month of August. And boy oh boy is it gonna be a good one guys. You know I'm finding some really unique titles this month man. Uh, collector's editions, out of print releases, limited editions, retro titles, uh, unknown gems. Like, there's a lot of really unique and interesting stuff in, in in August, and it just keeps getting better and better. And, man, I I can't wait to dive into them. I can't wait to talk to you guys about them. So definitely keep up to, to date with all of that stuff. It will be coming next month. I can't wait to show you those pickups, and can't wait to show you the pickups for July, which will be coming in about a couple weeks' time. I'm finishing up some of the special features and watching some some of the stuff. That was a really great haul for July, so definitely keep up to date and stay tuned for that video as well. Those pickups are going to be really u u unique. And just give you guys a heads up, keep up to date this upcoming weekend because I will be doing another live stream talking to you guys. I had a huge amount of fun with that live stream two and a half hours of talking to, to you guys the first time I ever did it and I was blown away by the questions and the responses and the love you guys gave me and I hope I answered your guys questions as good as I possibly could so I will be doing it yet again this upcoming weekend so definitely stay tuned for that guys it should be really really fun and before I let you guys go well, last week I talked to you guys about the whole deal that AMC and Universal had with shortening the theatrical window and how a lot of studios and movie theater chains like Cinemark and Regal were really pushing back uh, against it. And, you know, the whole future uh, of cinema and the theater going experience, well, add another wrench to that, and that is Disney. Of course they have to be another wrench. Why wouldn't they be? So, this 2020 movie season has been a real clusterfuck, man. I think all of us can pretty much agree on that. And it wasn't originally that way, to be honest with you. It just, once this coronavirus thing happened, everything just stopped dead in its tracks. And one of the big movie releases that was supposed to come out, I believe either late March or beginning of April, was Disney's Mulan. This big budget live action adaptation and everybody was looking forward to it. The trailers came out, people were impressed and COVID happened, it got pushed back. At first I believe it got pushed back to, to July if I'm not mistaken, June or July and then that quickly changed and then it got pushed back again and then that changed and then suddenly it was out indefinitely. And so we're figuring, okay, maybe they're going to push this back until either the holiday season this year or they're going to push it to next year, which, hey, we understand. But that's not what Disney did. Disney ended up saying, well, screw the theatrical window. We're just going to put it on Disney+. Plus. And that's exactly what they're doing, guys. Uh, they are foregoing the movie theater experience altogether and putting it right on their Disney Plus platform. Now, they're not putting it on there for free. You have to pay $30 for the exclusive access to the Mulan movie. 
but it's not a one-time rental either. If you pay that $30, it's basically yours as long as you have the Disney Plus service. You can watch it as many times as you want, but of course you have to pay that $30 fee. Now, this shocked so many people. It shocked the fans, it shocked the theater owners, it shocked other studios. I think people were just really taken aback by by this. And honestly, look, I I, I can't say that I, I blame them, man. I mean, this is a kick in the nuts to movie theaters and the cinema going experience. Because if you think about Disney, Disney every single year makes, oh my God, I mean, they billions and billions of dollars through the whole uh, movie theater experience, man. they That's one of their bread and butters now, is that. And, and to forego that experience, to put it straight on Disney+, Plus, that's balls, man. That takes balls, massive set of balls. And if you think about it from the Disney perspective, it actually makes a hell of a lot of sense because they realize they have a they have a Disney Plus streaming service that has, a, that has a huge fan base and people are subscribing to it week in and week out man getting new subscribers constantly $30 you can watch it as many times as you want and Disney does not have to give any of that revenue to any of the other movie theaters uh nothing they get to keep 100% of the profits for themselves so let's say for instance that only 20 or 30 percent of the subscribers on disney plus actually end up paying the 30 dollars for mulan that's 30 dollars every single person man i mean all you need technically is you need at least four people to purchase the 30 dollars and you're already over a hundred dollars just with Four people alone add on to how many millions of subscribers that Disney Plus has they're gonna be pocketing a hell of a lot of, of of ducats man they really honestly are dude and I think Disney sees the writing on the wall let's be fair here I think Disney understands that the movie theaters are in crisis mode right now they cannot guarantee shit all for any of, of these movies. In fact, the Warner Brothers, one of the Warner Brother media CEOs, recently came out in in some sort of interview and said that that he's most likely thinking that Wonder Woman 1984 and some of these other movies are going to be pushed back again. So there's no telling some of these big movies are even going to come out. So Disney is realizing, look, can we even rely on the movie going experience? I don't know if we even can do that because there's no telling whether it's even going to be fully functional by even the holiday season, let alone the beginning of next fucking year. Things are changing, guys. Things are hugely changing. And, you know, Bill and Ted, for instance, the same day it's going to be in movie theaters, it's coming on to streaming services. Mulan is going to Disney+. Plus, and you're starting to see that the theatrical window is closing with Universal and AMC doing this deal. And I'm telling you guys that movie theaters are in much bigger trouble than I think a lot of us ever thought they were. And I think with Disney doing what they're doing, and let's say, for instance, this is successful. Let's say that Disney is actually succeeding in this, right? Let, let's say they look at the numbers uh, a month or two months or six months after the release on Disney+, Plus, and they see the numbers and they like what they see. They're going to say, like, why the hell are we going to put our movies in movie theaters when we could get 100% of the profit and people get to still enjoy it on their big 55, 65, 75 inch screens. And, you know, we're not doing it as a one-time rental. People can watch it over and over again and get their money's worth. So we're actually making bank and making out and people are still enjoying what we're putting out. 
it's a win-win for us. It's a win-win for the Mouse House, dude. I'm telling you that Disney, if this is successful, be very prepared to see other movies that are going to go on the platform. I think you could see Soul. I think, and and I know you guys are probably going to think I'm nuts, but don't count out Black Widow for going on Disney+. Plus. Because if Mulan is successful, man, a lot of people have even flirted the idea of Black Widow going on there. A lot of people are like, ah, you know, they're not going to do it. Guarantee it. If this is successful, that will happen. And I think now the theater chains have to really think about what they're doing right now. They have to really reopen and reopen fast and get their shit together as fast as humanly possible. Because think about this. Disney has now decided to fuck the, the movie theaters over. Universal and AMC ha have made that deal. Other... Other studios have put their movies straight on, on streaming, sold them to Netflix. Others have said, well, look, we'll put it in theaters, but we got to put it on, on VOD at the same time on these streaming platforms. Look, movie theaters are in desperate, desperate trouble, man. And I'm telling you, if they don't get their act together and get their act together soon, and I mean soon, not soon next year, I mean soon by like, a month or two from now because boy if that doesn't happen i'm telling you it, it's gonna it's gonna be dire it really honestly is man and disney is like the king right now of the theatrical experience they make so much money for not only themselves but the movie theater chains so when they take mulan and they put it on a streaming service that is a huge gamble but if the gamble pays off, it's only good for them. It's not good for the movie th theaters. And they have to then actually go to Disney and actually negotiate with Disney. Disney has all the power here. They have all the power. And they know that movie theaters are, are desperate. And they know that movie theaters are, are, are right now the weak link. And they can go to the movie theaters and they say, Hey, by the way, if you want our movie... To play in your theaters guess what you're going to have this many theaters for us you're gonna run it for these many weeks and if you decide to not do that well guess what we're just gonna keep put it on our streaming platform and we'll make the the money and get a hundred percent of the profits and screw you got guys over they have all the advantage and right now this is a scary time for movie theaters and if I was them I would, I would, I would grab onto my balls for dear life because I'm telling you, somebody's going to rip them off and Disney's already starting to do that. I'm telling you, it's streaming versus movie theater chains. And a lot of the movie theater chains, I don't think they ever saw this coming. I think we did as physical media lovers, knowing where streaming has hurt us, but movie theaters never saw it coming. They never thought this day would happen, and it now is. And now they have to readjust, and God bless them for that. I hope they're ready for the fight, because it's going to be a really tough one, and I don't know if they're going to win this. Definitely let me know what you think about this, guys. I think it's incredibly fascinating, man. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of the releases this week, all of that jazz. And if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, definitely give it a thumbs up as well. Check out all the other titles, well, titles, all the other videos that I have on the channel, the other Blu-ray and DVD Tuesday videos, the Blu-ray hunting videos, the Blu-ray pickup videos, the theatrical movie reviews, so much more. If you guys are fans of movies and physical media, hit subscribe and become a part of the Film Fan Nation. Guys, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel, giving me the love, and I hope I give the love right back to you. And keep up to date with everything I'm doing through Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, Film Fan 108. Keep up to date with everything I'm doing, plus special pictures and videos I do from time to time on social media as well. All right, guys. I will see you back next week for a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video. Take care, everybody, and happy hunting.